All right. I think we'll go ahead and get started. And if some more people join us along the way, then that's totally okay. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone tonight. Uh, my name is Danielle Driscoll. I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations. Um, John Bartlow is also on, on with us tonight. As you probably know, he's the Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations. And then, of course, we have Jim Otter with us tonight. <laughs> and we also have Katie George. She's, she's joining us right now, and she's the Director of Development for College of Technology. Um, so that's kind of, kind of that on our end. Um, kind of, we have a lot of people here tonight. This is our first uh, virtual gorilla gathering for the fall, so we're excited to have such a great group. Um, we have several people who haven't attended Gorilla Gatherings before, so we're glad that we could engage you um, wherever you are. We kind of have everyone everywhere, honestly, so um, we're, we're glad everyone is here. So I think I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jim, and, and he is going to provide you with an update. Well, thanks for everybody signing up tonight. When they advertised this, I said I might as well volunteer to go first. I think this is the first session. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I was pleased with the number of people that signed up and seemed to span quite a few years here. Unfortunately, most of them cover my years here, so they go back quite a ways. And then some of the most recent graduates, so it's nice to, to see some of the, the alumni from all, all over the country, all over the world. Actually, we've got people from everywhere tonight, so I'm pleased to have the opportunity to kind of give you an update on what's happening in the School of Construction and uh, kind of give you a look ahead of what we think is happening uh, next year and into our future. And uh, Danielle asked about questions. I'm totally free. If you want to ask a question, just jump in and ask. It's, uh, I'd rather do that uh, as we're moving forward rather than wait till the end. So I do have some specific questions that people emailed in. I'll try to get those towards the end. So let me start with, um, for those of you that have been, been uh, away from Pitt State for a while, to kind of explain our School of Construction status was something that we pulled off about 10 years ago. Uh, kind of gave us a, uh, us and the nursing are the only two schools within the uh, Pitt State University, gave us a little bit higher status than a, uh, a department. And because of that, we kind of had an expansion mission. Uh, our core program is definitely our construction management program. It's got 300 plus majors in it. Continues to be our, our, our foundation for the entire school of construction. Very high profile, very good recognition, uh, a lot of notoriety, a lot of company support, industry hiring. It's, we just couldn't, be, couldn't do any better with our CM program. And then coupled with that is our construction engineering technology program, which uh, continues to struggle with a uh, uh, number of majors. We bring a lot in, but a lot of them shift over to construction management. So that group's staying around 50. We'd like to get them back up to 60 or 75. We've got a, uh, Chris Pross, one of our new faculty, has been working on some strategies to help improve that. Uh, so that construction piece is doing well. We also have a, uh, a Bachelor's of Applied Science in Construction that was actually started as a joint venture in the College of Technology to cover uh, students that get an Associate of Applied Science degree uh, and then come in and don't want to spend another three or three and a half years getting our four-year degrees. It's a true two plus two. We take everything they get at their, with their Associate's degree and we add 60 hours on top of that We've had a really good success with that, particularly from Southwest Kansas. Dodge City has been a great partner with us this year. They sent us six students, and we're going to get another group in the spring. So right now, they're kind of the, the uh, biggest player with our BAS. We average about 10 to 12 students in that uh, every year, and, and uh, uh, that one's doing well. We'd like to get that one up to a little bit, uh, to 15, 20, but that one's going really well for us. And then uh, about eight years ago, we took our safety emphasis and turned it into a, a four-year safety program titled Environmental and Safety Management. That program 
grew very rapidly. We got up to about 60, 65 majors, and then it, it took the predictable dip that always happens after about five years. And we were down to about 50 majors, and now we're trying to uh, work on some recovery with that. Very marketable degree, placement rates uh, uh, amazing. Uh, but it's just very hard to, to attract a freshman into a program like that. We get a lot of non-traditionals into that program and a lot of people coming back after a career or after they've been in a career to look at that one. Our recent addition was our interior design program. Uh, we had an interior design emphasis in our family and consumer sciences program in the College of Arts and Sciences. And uh, they were using a lot of our Cla uh, classes and a lot of our labs. So we just made a pitch to bring them over as part of our College of Technology and it went very well. At the time we transferred them over, they were down to about 15 majors. That program's boomed to about 50 majors just in two years. So it's been a really nice addition. Most of those students are, um, in addition to getting their interior design major, take enough courses to get a minor in construction. It's been kind of a nice partnership we're working really hard on that program to get them accredited by their accrediting agency. So over the next couple of years, that's our number one objective for that program. It's been a really nice addition to our, our School of Construction. And then uh, this last year we added, we, we started looking at the assets in the College of Technology and, and how they matched up. We're doing some reorganization. And we had this, we had this two year electrical technology program it's been around Pitt State forever, and it prepares electricians for uh, residential, commercial, and industrial applications. We started comparing some of the companies that recruited those individuals, and many of them map up uh, the recruit for our project managers and estimators in the electrical business. So we brought them in uh, to our program. It's really been a nice addition. We've got two faculty, and we average 45 to 50 majors in that. We only allow 25 in each year, and uh, we're working really hard to keep that program uh, full all the time because the placement rate is, is, is off the charts on that one. And then the other part of, of our structure is we partner with two uh, graduate programs. We, have, uh, we partner with the Masters of Engineering Technology and then the Masters of Science and Technology, and we offer a construction emphasis. Both of those have grown considerably over the last five years. The, uh, the Masters of Science and Technology with the construction emphasis is probably the biggest growth market. We're averaging together about 20 to 30 majors, graduate students in those programs. Uh, mostly internationals, some, some domestic, but mostly internationals. And uh, it's a hot thing right now. If we could figure out, if we had the resource to take that online fully, we could, we could probably double or triple that number, but it's, it's really been a big, big draw item for a graduate right now. As far as uh, things that are going on within the School of Construction, I mentioned uh, uh, some of our new programs. We, we have really good uh, coordinating professors for those. Uh, Ed Moore kind of heads up our uh, electrical tech program. Him and Jeff Brooks are our two faculty, but Ed is kind of taking the lead on that. We've just moved him into the coordinator's position this last year. And Denise Bertensino is our coordinator for the uh, interior design program. She's been here at Pitt State for a long time. And she's very, very well skilled at, uh, uh, in the interior design program. So she does a wonderful job. This last year, uh, Pat Flynn stepped down as coordinator for the safety program, and we appointed Brian Welch to be our new uh, coordinating professor for that program. So Brian's getting his legs up under him right now. He's getting hit by a lot of things, program review, scheduling, and all the changes we had to make because of COVID-19. For the construction programs, we uh, uh, most of you remember Randy Timmy. Randy retired a couple years ago. We replaced him with Chris Prost. Chris Pross is teaching our, our structures courses now, and Chris is our coordinator for our construction ET program. And uh, Chad Crane, who was our lab associate for a number of years, uh, moved into a full-time faculty position, and we, have, we hired Travis Solander to be our uh, lab tech, and that's working out pretty, pretty good for us. 
Uh, most of you remember Justin Honey. Justin uh, focused on our residential programs but taught a number of our methods courses. Uh, he resigned last year to pursue private industry and uh, he was a builder and he's a builder at heart. So he's back in the Joplin market and he's got about two and a half to three million dollars worth of work ahead of him that he's currently pursuing in the residential market. Good thing is uh, Justin's staying on as an adjunct force. He's teaching two classes a semester and he's such a skilled instructor that helps us a lot. So we've uh, we tried to keep him on and he's gonna he, uh, agreed to stay on, teach two classes a semester. Then we added Robin Phillip, Norm's wife. She's helping us in our construction graphics area. We kind of restructured our office staff too. Uh, we had a resignation last year and Tracy Bevilacqua moved up to be our primary administrator. And we hired back Wendy Ginnivan. She, uh, she uh, was a part-time force uh, while we had somebody on maternity leave. We were able to bring her back and uh, her and Tracy clicked together very well. And between the two of them, they've accomplished some amazing things over the summer and continue to improve our office environment and our procedures were much more efficient. And we're very pleased with that, um, uh, th those changes. One of the things that we're, we're really uh, having to address, I was gonna say wrestling with, but the reality is we have to address it is our future and uh, uh, the challenges we're gonna face or continue to face are the necessity to hire more adjuncts and part-time faculty and less full-time tenured faculty. It's a little bit of a change for me. I've been so used to having full-time tenured faculty to carry the load and we're gonna have to change our model a little bit uh, to hire more adjuncts and more uh, part-time faculty. We can get more experts that way, but we have less to help us with our service role on campus. That's good. That's being driven primarily by PSU's I'm finances. Sure. I want to verify. I'm like some of the some of the future issues we have uh, going down the road with the state of Kansas finances. Also, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Relative to what's new, well, what's new is the same with everybody else. COVID nineteen's new. I think I spent all summer doing nothing but changing courses around, figuring out how to get X number of people in a classroom and uh, moving tables and chairs probably 30 or 40 times to make it all work. But we did an amazing job. Uh, we kind of took a stand that no matter what, we wanted to teach face to face. We had others on campus that were opting for uh, online and we decided to see if we could make it face to face work and we did. We had a few bumps week two and three. Uh, we were at some points, 15, 20% of our students out either quarantined or isolated. But when we got through that bump, it, 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 it changed and now we're maybe ones and twos in a classroom. So we're very pleased. The students are tickled to death. We were able to keep face-to-face -face laboratories and activities. And uh, we're feeling pretty comfortable about getting through the end of a shortened semester. We're kind of stopping our semester at uh, right before Thanksgiving coupling our fall break uh, with Thanksgiving. And then after that, it's just a finals and dead week. And we're doing those all online. So students aren't coming back after Thanksgiving. They just have to take their finals. So because of that, everything's been scorched down. Everybody's fast pacing their courses. We're doubling up on labs. We're moving, throwing stuff at students much faster pace and it's going very well. Students are responding very positively. Those that have to be isolated or quarantined or keeping up through Zoom and keeping in touch with the professors. When they come back, professors are working overtime to get them all caught up in labs. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased with our response to this whole environment. We're 100% masked in the classroom. We've got every other seat uh, isolated. We have uh, more sanitizer than I probably could ever imagine us using. We've got shields, we do everything, and it's working really, really well. We've had a couple of faculty isolated and quarantined, but not very many. So that's worked, worked amazingly well for us. Unfortunately, we uh, weren't able to do our company day this year. We, we took it right up to the uh, two or three week deadline and we had to pull the plug on it. We were kind of hoping to do it because we made some big changes in the tech center this summer. For all of you guys that were tired of the pink flooring and the green and white flooring, it's gone. 
We wiped it out this summer. We worked really hard from May to right up before the semester started. On the first floor, we polished concrete in many of the primary hallways. And then we used a walk-off carpet at all the entrances. And from the main entrance all the way to the dean's office is walk-off carpet. It looks pretty darn nice. And then the second floor, we did 100% carpet on the second floor, really dampened the sound up here and makes the second floor really, really look nice. So if you get an opportunity to come look at it, it, it it's, it's awesome. The stairways we're gonna do over the Christmas break, we couldn't get those done in time. We're gonna re-epoxy all the stairways. Uh, and, and because of this whole spillover, we uh, redid a couple of our classrooms. Our equipment simulator lab was completely redone. Several classrooms in our uh, interview rooms that we use, all, uh, they were all changed out too. So if you get a chance, you're gonna see quite a change in the looks of the building. Uh, we're slowly getting chances. We're painting the walls to get rid of that pink feel that we had for years. And uh, that that's probably one of the most significant changes we've had this summer. We did some changes to our equipment simulator lab. Like I said, we revamped it. We also added a new equipment simulator from Kiwit. They were taking one of their uh, uh, units out of their million dollar equipment or their crane simulator mobile unit. And uh, they were willing to give that to us. We've got it set up. It's a Lieb here crane. Uh, we've got it installed, but we're still working to get the software operational. Been a little bit of a challenge to us. Beautiful system. Uh, we put that in our equipment lab and it really looks nice. We've got some other modifications going on. In all of our laboratories, we're updating all of our labs with new computers and new monitors. Uh, done quite a bit of work with cleaning up some of our storage spaces. We threw tons and tons of stuff away. I mentioned Wendy earlier. Wendy took on the task to scan and file every senior project we've had for the last 25 years. So our senior project shelves are bare and they're all scanned in thousands and thousands and thousands of pages uh, that we have a record of our senior projects. That was a big effort uh, Wendy tackled. Throughout the summer, we, we kind of had to back away on some stuff. Uh, most of you know we do a construct your future for uh, middle, uh, grade school and middle school kids. We had to cancel that this summer. Everybody that had signed up, we sent them a t-shirt. We give them out uh, high vis t-shirts anyway. So we did that to everybody that signed up and gave them their money back. We were at about 15 students gonna attend that. Luckily our Construction Alumni Association golf tournaments uh, went off. Uh, we we, we uh, shortened them a little bit as far as number of attendees. Wichita golf tournament uh, uh, netted well over $20,000. Our Kansas City golf tournament uh, netted nearly $30,000. Our Pittsburgh golf tournament right around nine to 10,000. We canceled Rogers and uh, the Kansas City sporting clay event was just canceled this week. And our Wichita sporting clay event is next Friday, the 9th. So we're not gonna have as much to give away in scholarships this year, but we still feel like we'll be able to give 50 or $60,000 away. We've been averaging about 120 to 130,000 and giving away 60 to 80,000. So we're still in pretty good shape. We were also allowed to uh, continue our, our KCCA, our Center for Construction Advancement workshops. We've done all of our ACI workshops, haven't missed, missed a bit on those. So we were able to continue all those. And the other thing that was kind of a big event for us this last year, we uh, submitted our ABET accreditation report for both our construction ET and our construction management program. Uh, we uh, had a good site visit. They cited us for a few weaknesses. We were able to respond to those weaknesses in a timely fashion. And based on our response, the July ABET meeting gave us full accreditation for both programs. We're now supposed to say for six years, but it was somewhere around six years we're gonna get full accreditation. So that's a big, uh, big load off our back for another six years. Our enrollment was really good. We were really nervous about the reaction students would have with the COVID-19 environment. Uh, to be honest, our freshman enrollment 
was pretty much matched last year's. It almost matched it identically. And that's positive. We're, we're, we're bring, we brought in over 50 new freshmen. Our transfer numbers was the highest transfer number we've had. So we started out looking really good. Uh, we had some people pull out. Some decided to stay on internships and just go ahead and spend another year on an internship. Uh, net results, we're down about 5% this year. We were at one time thinking we'd be down 10 to 15%. So we're pretty comfortable that we held within 5% of where we were last fall. Uh, that was a little touch and go, uh, but we're, uh, we're very comfortable with that. The biggest growth uh, we had was in interior design. Our construction management program uh, just dropped about 18 students out of 350 some, so we're very, very comfortable there. So our numbers are very good. The part that doesn't show up on our numbers are the increase we had in graduate students. Like I said, we, we carry a pretty heavy graduate load. Uh, it's good for us, but uh, uh, they don't show up on our numbers all the time because they're in other departments. One of the things that continues to be a strong point for our school construction is the number of students that transfer internally from other programs here at Pitt State. Uh, one of the charts I sent on the PowerPoint kind of highlighted those trends and we're starting to see uh, more and more students transfer early. They're getting in here, declaring other majors and hearing about our degree. So we've done a pretty good job on campus about profiling the career opportunities in our, in our programs. Some of the big issues we're, we're, we're looking at this year, uh, we kind of got a, uh, a break, I would say. We got some uh, COVID-19 federal and state money to help Pitt State offset some of the losses in revenue this year. And because of that, it looks like financially we'll probably be in a pretty good shape this year, but next year might be a big challenge without some additional uh, federal or state funding. So we're, uh, we're, we're nervously optimistic about this year and nervous, to be honest, about next year. It might be a tight year. We're gonna wait and see. We've continued to uh, limit travel for all of our faculty. So a lot of our travel budget we have in the School of Construction, we're shifting over into equipment. So we're, we're adding some new equipment in a number of our laboratories and we're doing, we're doing some modernization in some of our classrooms with uh, uh, some better uh, technology for, going, for online instruction as we need it. So that's the big thing we're, we're kind of shifting some money away from. We're in the process of doing our program review, something we do about every five or six years. Uh, we're just uh, in the process of completing that. The, um, our labs, we're re-looking at all of our labs to see what equipment we need to add there to uh, keep it modern at all times. So we're pretty comfortable. We, most of you know we had to come cancel our picnic our welcome back picnic, which we love to do for all of our freshmen. All the faculty get out and cook burgers and, and hot dogs for everybody. And, and we welcome all of our freshmen and all of our transfer students. And we weren't able to do that this year, so it was a little bit of a disappointment. But uh, we might be able to, if things hold on, we might be able to do a pancake feed uh, sometime during our last week. We may do that. Now, in light of the company day being canceled, the one thing that has still gone on very strong are the company presentations. Most of you may be familiar with that in the evenings we do company presentations in a classroom environment. Those have continued to go on. We require masks, uh, spacing, social distancing, and uh, no food unless it's packaged food. And we're solid through the much month of October. It's just packed every night. So companies are still coming in. Last two weeks of September, they've been full. We got somebody here tonight, tomorrow night. We've got some companies doing virtual uh, sessions. It, it, for the students, it's awesome. So we haven't missed a beat relative to that. Some of the things that we're starting to see some impact on, most of you uh, uh, knew that the Pitt State's out-of-state tuition reached out. So we have full out-of-state tuition for Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Kansas now. And then some uh, border states, 
get to one and a half tuition, one, to one and a half times. We're seeing more students from these other states inquiring about our program. They've heard about our program. They've heard about our hands-on approach versus a classroom approach. And that's, that's drawn in students from a broader spectrum. So we're getting the word out. It's been very positive for us. Uh, future issues, uh, we kind of mentioned those, but the Board of Regents funding is going to be a touch and go for next year. It's going to impact all of us. So we're, uh, we're on eggshells right now. We'll see what happens. Uh, I believe the Board of Regents is looking at addressing more diversity issues. We're doing a pretty good job, not great, but a pretty good job. We've had two market areas that have gone up in the school construction. Uh, with the addition of interior design, obviously we have more females in our, in our school, but also we've had more females added to our, our construction management program primarily and our safety program. And then we've really grown in with his Hispanics. Uh, largely supported by Southwest Kansas, Dodge City area, and Wichita area. We're seeing the number of Hispanics in our program grow very well. That's been a great, great, great addition to our program. So our diversity is getting better. It's not where we need to be, but we're doing much better. We've heard also that the Board of Regents is going to focus on a statewide gen ed package. Uh, we don't know what that means. We just got done doing a big gen ed revamp here in, the, in Pitt State. Uh, now we're looking at another statewide gen ed package. These things seem to come up about every 10 years and we migrate our way through them and we'll see what happens on this one. Uh, the other thing we heard the Board of Regents is going to crack, really look hard at this year is degree duplication. Right now in the state of Kansas, us, K-State and Fort Hayes have construction programs. We're all a little bit different from each other, so I don't know if you would equate that to duplication. Nobody's going to be able to handle the volume in all three of those programs in one spot anyway. So I'm not too worried about uh, degree duplication from our end right at this time. I don't know if I can share this, but I will anyway. Pitt State's done a phenomenal job of, of adjusting their budgets this year. Uh, a lot of positions in academic support areas have not been filled. We've had retirements. We're not backfilling in academic affairs where uh, Dr. Smith is combining a lot of activities from two people down to one people. So we're getting leaner and, and maybe a little bit meaner too, but uh, we're doing a pretty good job of trying to be cost effective in, in these times. So I give Dr. Smith a lot of credit for making some very tough decisions to, to, to help save faculty positions, I believe. Some of the future issues we're paying attention to, scholarships, students, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a weird environment. They all tell us they need them, but then we have to beg them to apply for scholarships. But when they get them, they're so thankful and appreciative. So we'll continue to try to promote that. So many students just think if they're not a 4.0 student, they're not eligible. We give them as many scholarships away to a 3.0 student as we do a 4.0 student. So we're working on that. Our recruitment efforts, man, we haven't missed a beat on that. We got prospective students coming in all the time. Uh, probably every week, five to 10 prospective students are showing up. We're giving tours. Uh, we've got some rock stars coming in that, we're, that are trying to make a decision between a couple of universities. And these are some top notch, 31 ACT type students. We're excited. Uh, we're getting them from St. Louis, from farther away. That's just real exciting. But we, everybody's on there. Uh, uh, putting in a great effort to recruit and to give student tours. It just continues to grow. Quality always becomes an issue with us. We've got a quality initiative going on right now to try to, to try to figure out how to enhance and maintain our quality in all of our courses. Faculty have been doing a booming job trying to keep our standards high and students are responding. Some of our new freshmen we've got in the last two years are really top-notch students and they're rising to some of our challenges. So we're tickled to death about that. Some of the things we're also paying to is attention to the school of constructions rising in enrollment or has been up to this year, but the college of technology, we got some programs that are declining. So that kind of, from a college perspective, we want the college of technology to stay strong. So we're trying to figure out how to help some of these other programs get bolstered back up. Uh, we've had some pretty good losses in a couple of our other departments. 
Um, I mentioned the graduate program. That's that's just blowing. If we would have had restrictions from international students' uh, admissions this year, we probably would have increased another 25% in the one of the graduate programs. I mentioned earlier a little change in the environment about part-time and adjuncts versus full-time. That's going to be the new trend for us. We did a we did a national study a couple years ago, a group called our PK group. They identified the construction programs as being the, the, the cornerstone of as far as opportunity placement. We scored top notch on that. But when they did the financial analysis, we got beat up pretty hard. So they're, they're asking us to take a look at how to cut some of our costs and still deliver the same type of program. So we're, uh, we're working on that. We're going to do that with some strategic hires and adjuncts and part-time faculty. We've got some regional partnerships going on that are still looking good. KC, Wichita, Kansas City, Wichita are our prime growth areas. But we're doing very well in Northwest Arkansas and Northeast Oklahoma. That market, and particularly the Tulsa area, is really ripe for us. And uh, we're working with something in Southwest Kansas with Dodge City to try to maybe uh, pick up some more students out there. So we've got some good uh, uh, connections. Our online hybrid program offerings, we've done a great job of adapting. We're, we all know a lot more about Zoom and Meets and Teams and every other format you can deliver a, a course in. Uh, we're doing a better job in that. So with that, I'll go to questions. We had a couple of questions. I'll start with the ones that were, were sent in. Um, Glenn asked us about real estate. We had talked about this and we have it on our strategic plan to look at a real estate uh, component. The problem we're facing right now is the provost and the dean is challenging all pro, uh, programs to look at their emphasis. We currently have six emphasis in our construction management program and they're all fairly viable. And so right now we're trying to figure out how to keep courses that we value without cutting too many positions. So to figure out how to do a real estate emphasis is, it would be a challenge for us at this time. I think until finances are, are more stable in the state of Kansas and at the universities, I don't think we'll be adding any new programs or new emphasis areas uh, without external support, to be very honest. And then Virgil and uh, Christy uh, asked, is the virtual classroom more or less productive than face-to-face -face classroom teaching? Well, I don't know if productive is the term, but uh, uh, it's, it's more flexible for the students that can't come to class. But we all admit that, uh, particularly for our lab classes, being face-to-face -face, uh, is, is so much more effective for the students. It's a great a backup when students can't be in class uh, for a week or two and so that's the that's kind of how we're treating those but uh, I think even the students will tell you that they're much better off in all of our classes we've flipped so many of our classes to be more activity-based classes project-based learning activity-based learning whatever you want to call it and cut out a lot more of the lectures so posting lectures online videotaping them ahead of time, letting students look at those. A lot of our faculty are doing that. And we're using class times now to do things. And uh, I think that's going to be our trend in the future. So if we can maintain as much of that, it's, it, it's a positive. Questions? Jim, with the cut-in travel budget for your faculty, what can we do to help you? I don't have to travel to Wichita. I live here. What what can I do to help you? Well, we have we have ample travel budget. We just have a travel restriction. Uh, so we're able to travel, you know, locally, Kansas City, Wichita. We can't travel out of state, theoretically. Uh, so we've cut down all of our conferences, our national or regional conferences. Many of those have been canceled anyway. So what we would normally spend on, on national travel uh, each year, uh, we still have that funding. We don't want to lose it. So we're just, we're just repositioning it. 
normally uh, every faculty member travels to at least one national conference each year, some two or three. But this year we're, we're restricted or most, most of them have been canceled. So we've got the budget to travel, but we just can't travel right now. Jim, are you guys seeing any uh, change in the opportunities and the hiring and recruiting of any of the students in the fall or spring semester? Uh, spring, no. Fall, a little bit uh, uh, premature to answer that accurately, but the companies that are recruiting said they've got work in front of them. All the ones that have been here so far are all hiring. And uh, uh, so, so far, I would have to say it, it, it looks pretty good. Uh, again, we've got a full gamut of companies coming in October, and we've got a pretty large group doing online stuff. And all of them seem to be seeking. So don't have a real feel on the internship part of it yet. Uh, most of them are saying they're looking for interns, but I haven't heard a lot about the full time. Although uh, when we surveyed our seniors that are graduating, most of them are already employed. So very few are signing up for interviews right now, the seniors. So uh, right now, I think most of the seniors feel pretty good about their placement. We'll see what happens in the spring. That will probably be the uh, – gives a better indicator. But right now it seems really positive. You got a minute to tell us how uh, adjunct professorships work and how, how, how we can help with that? We pay them less. <laughs> <laughs> work them harder. They're not tenured, which means we can chuck them out the door any chance we want. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reality. We, but then they don't have a faculty typically have a three tier uh, commitment, teaching, service and scholarly activity. And we do a pretty good job of that, particularly the service load is pretty heavy. But when you're an adjunct or a part time, you don't have that requirement. You're not subject to uh, scholarly activity, nor are you subject to service. You just teach the courses you're hired to teach. So we get by with paying them less, but the expectations are less. They don't, they don't uh, if they're adjuncts or part-time, you know, they are not eligible for tenure, uh, but they're just teaching one class. We also have another category called non-tenure earning faculty, where we hire faculty on a returning annual basis, uh, but they're not tenure earning. So they're not going to go up for tenure and they just stay on staff. That'll be, probably all of our new faculty in the next two or three years will be all non-tenured faculty. We'll pay for them, but again, since they're non-tenured, if we have to cut, we can cut them. Uh, we've got some great non-tenured faculty currently working for us. They still have to meet teaching and service requirements, but we don't put as heavy of a scholarly requirement on them because they're not gonna go up for tenure. So those adjunct positions, Jim, same requirements as far as having to have advanced degrees and stuff to be able to teach those? They have to meet the Higher Learning Commission. So yeah, they have to have a graduate degree for us to, uh, to hire. And that's, that seems, the down, that's the downside. That seems like such a waste. You have a lot of people like Larry that are hiring a couple of years that would love to come teach and they'd even do it for free. But we, you, know, you don't have it. You got 50 years of experience, but no advanced degree. That doesn't We have. Anything. We have some opportunity on this. Howard Smith, our new provost, is probably uh, more of an advocate for getting professionals in uh, that have a, uh, extensive industrial experience. So we're working on that throughout the College of Technology because we face that. Some of the universities have uh, identified a position called a professor of practice, and they allow them to come in with a baccalaureate degree but 20 or years or more industrial experience. And those have gone over pretty well. They, they're not subject to any research or anything. They just teach. And uh, I think that's opened a few uh, eyes on campus. Uh, Dr. Frisbee's all for that. He comes from that background, our, our dean of the college. So I think there's some possibility. Right now, I think everything's kind of been chucked out the door because of COVID-19. We, we're just, we're migrating that every day. And uh, like I said, I think we actually came that close to shutting the place down 
about week two or three, and then luckily the curve changed. So some of these things we, we got on the books we have to pay attention to. Uh, I know the whole administration's meeting weekly, every week to figure out their next steps. So I think a lot of things have been put on a back burner, uh, Scott. So maybe we'll be able to address that. I hope, I hope we will, particularly if we can identify somebody as an adjunct to come in and uh, 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 to teach specialty courses. I think that would help us a lot. What, what kind of courses are you talking about, Jim? Well, at, at this point, you know, we, we have so many courses, you know, we have our methods courses, that's one. I mean, right now, Joe's teaching both cost management courses, he's teaching both construction management courses, and he's teaching our contracts courses. So one of those, a contracts class would be one. Uh, our construction management course is, is, you know, covers all aspects of project management, but scheduling is a big piece of that. But our methods courses on site work and steel and, and concrete and, and masonry are big ones. Probably we'll have an opportunity in the future in our civil construction course that covers bridges and roads and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Bill Strength is probably going to be looking at retiring soon. His, uh, uh, that'll open up that, those sections of courses that he teaches uh, so that's where we're looking at right now. Jim, I want to ask a question. Sure. Most of the of our alumni who are on this call are probably those who are more involved anyway because they're here tonight. But I guess what my overall question is, what can the folks who are on this call or even those who are not, what can your construction alumni do to better serve and better help the School of Construction in Pittsburgh State? Well, first of all, I think you're our frontline recruiters, passing the word on about our program and telling them about what's unique. And, and uh, you know, believe it or not, people still don't know where Pittsburgh State is. And informing them about this little Southeast Kansas University that has probably one of the premier construction management programs in the nation. Uh, the other part of it is, and, and it's a passion of mine, always has been, always will be, and that's to provide scholarships for students. Uh, I know I mentioned it's hard sometimes to convince them they're eligible, but, uh, you know, we have, I mentioned all the students that come from Dodge City, every one of those could be a financial needs case right off the bat. They're great students, but they struggle financially. We probably lose five or 10 students every year because they just can't afford to pay the bills. And many of them we see struggle from semester to semester. They're trying to pay off the fall semester and they're starting the spring semester and they still owe the university money. That's tough. It's really tough. You know, it's federal aid is difficult to do get anymore. Uh, it's limited. The Pell grants that you didn't have to pay back are pretty hard to get. Uh, if they're not eligible for certain loans, low in, then the other loans are fairly pricey. And to be honest, most of the students we're seeing, man, they've heard about all this uh, college debt. They, they're trying to figure out how to get out of here without debt. So we're seeing more and more students that are saying, man, I, I don't want to have debt when I get out of here. So I, I, uh, I'm very supportive of anybody willing to support scholarships. That's that's our big, big issue. If you got somebody local that's coming down here and you know them, man, help them out. Thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, uh, give them a scholarship, and and uh, we get people from every place you guys are at. If you happen to talk to somebody that's got an interest, uh, help them out. That's probably a bigger challenge than academics is financials. Any Jim, other questions? Yeah, you can talk to Katie one. George about, Katie will take care of all the scholarship for you. She's our scholarship. She's done a great job leading our effort to increase scholarships. 
and uh, she's she works out there hard to keep adding those. So, if you know anybody, any if interested in give, helping financially with scholarship, Katie's the person to go to. Hey Jim, who's the new recruiter for the College of Technology? I knew Jim Snyder, but it's been many years, I think, since he retired. Uh, we do have a new recruiter. Uh, their business got shut down. They're all virtual right now. Mm -hmm. And we had them all lined up for the state fair, which we canceled. Uh, all of our events that we used to go to, we had four scheduled for the spring that were uh, Construct Your Future events in Missouri, Build Your Future events, the big one in Hutchison. All of those got canceled. So, yeah, we got a lot of those got cut off. Now they want us to do those virtually. We're trying to figure out a way to do it virtually. We're working right now to do our open house virtually. That's coming up in about a month. John Eiley's spearheading that. We're trying to come up with a good way to do all that virtually. I think I'm going to put a camera on my forehead and walk around the tech center. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's – um, uh, I don't know how the recruiters are going to keep it up, but they seem to be bringing in lots of students, at least – from the school construction's perspective, so. Well, I'd love to get connected with whoever the new one is, just in the Phoenix market, to connect them with this, especially like CTE schools or more tech STEM schools that we have here. Yeah, the, our biggest push in the Phoenix market has obviously been our Wood Tech program. They have a they have an agreement down there, and that's working oh, pretty well, I think. Yeah, I think there was a there's a city staff member with me who knows someone going to Pitt because of that. Well, our problem has always been the farther we reach out, the less bang for our buck we get. So I'm very cautious about, you know, when Jim Snyder first hired on, he was recruiting in Chicago and Detroit and, you know, every place, East Coast, West Coast. And the reality is once you get about 150 miles away from Pitt State, it gets harder and harder to recruit a student because there's so dang many construction programs out there. And they're popping up like flies right now. Every, every civil engineering program is adding CM on the backside of civil engineering so that they can capitalize on this construction management phenomena right now. What else? When are we going to name it the Jim Otter School of Construction at Pittsburgh State? I doubt it. I'm just, I'm just tickled to death. We've done so much for so many people that somebody asked me the other day what our strength and our weakness was. I said, they're probably the same thing. We've probably helped a lot of marginal students get really great careers. And uh, uh, that's been one of our strengths. A lot of people come in and we were looking at our ACT scores, which I don't always value as a great measure, but we don't have, we don't have huge ACTs. We start recruiting, you know, top end, we're not going to keep those students. We got a lot of 19, 20, 21, 22s, and they're out there rocking the world right now. And that's that's probably been the been the thing that uh, uh, most of us old timers appreciate the most is we hung in there when it was a been, there were some times when it was going to be easy to, to, to cut this construction management program off. But we kept hanging in there. And, and now we're kind of the, we're one of the big dogs on campus. And so so I think our efforts, we, we figured out what we do and we, we try to do it the best we can. I think as long as we can do that, um, my concern is always the future. You know, how do we keep the next generation of faculty with the same passion and the same ideology that we have to do things to teach kids, not just lecture them? And that's my biggest concern, to be honest, is as we move forward, how do we keep that same approach to our, what we've done? Jim, we all know that you've been a big part of that for a long time. We're very appreciative of it. So I meant what I said and all that in the future. They might name a bathroom after me <laughs> or a closet. <laughs> what else? Hey, Jim, I, I know that you mentioned uh, the, uh, the fact that the further out you go, um, how recruitment gets harder. I guess a question I have, or I'm out in the Denver area, um, 
working out here and uh one thing that i've noticed is that they've got quite a few um associate degrees in construction out here but uh, the only major uh, construction management degree that you can get is from Colorado State, um, but they're they're uh, they're hungry for people out here that need uh, bachelor's degrees in, in construction management. Has there been any consideration about you know looking even further west than Dodge City into the the Denver area? I mean, because it's uh it's the the Denver metropolitan area is expanding rapidly, and and they're hungry for people that that need uh, construction management degrees. I was actually in Denver a year ago at a conference and I had every contractor there uh, begging us to send students to Denver. But the, the challenge we have, to, to be honest, recruiting there, um, part of it's geographical. Uh, you look at Colorado and you look at Kansas and you're gonna get a kid to transfer or move from Colorado to Kansas. It's a little pull. And the other part is Colorado State's so large, their construction program is, is very large. But uh, uh, there are a couple other smaller ones in the region. But it's, it's uh, we've placed plenty of students in the Denver market, not a lot, but some. But recruiting to get them to come to Kansas out of the Denver market is, is very difficult. We probably had now, we might have better luck if we, you know, targeted like uh, southeast Colorado around the Pueblo area or get up in, you know, the closer we get to Colorado State, the bigger the challenge it becomes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah placement-wise, we could send, it's like every state, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, we could send everybody to any one of those states. Colorado is one of those. What else? I know you all just sitting on wait, edge waiting for the Biden Trump debate tonight. So, have you ever talked with any of the brokerage houses about um, project management recruiting out of the uh, Pitt State School? To be honest, no. Probably because we have such high placement rate. All we need is another fifty companies trying to recruit here. That would make Larry and Scott and everybody else upset. <laughs> yes, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, our our potential here is is almost as far as placement is almost unlimited because uh, you know I jokingly say if we could, if we had the capacity to double and could maintain our quality, I I believe we could place that many students every year. All right, any last questions for Jim or anything else Pitt State related? Okay, all right, I just have a couple of quick announcements. Um, you may have seen that we are doing a virtual homecoming. So that will be October 12th through the 16th. Um, you know, of course, we weren't able to host our traditional homecoming and have everyone here on campus with a football game, but we do want to um, still engage you at home. We will host a History of PSU event on Monday, and that's virtual. We have some pride packs available that we can send you in the mail, um, limited edition. We have a cutting board in there, a 2021 calendar, and several other goodies. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested. And uh, this virtual grill gathering has been great. Jim did an excellent job, of course. Round of applause for him. <laughs> but we are also hosting quite a few more throughout the semester. So if you're interested in um, any other areas at Pitt State, I encourage you to check that out on our website, pittstate.edu slash alumni. All that information is available to you. You can just register and we'll just send you the Zoom link like we did tonight. Um, so that's pretty, pretty easy. Just a few announcements. We'll send you um, an email in the morning with some information, um, maybe from Jim, and then a few things from our office, from the alumni office, a few things that we do um, or that you can be involved in when you're not necessarily here. 
Um, and the last thing is we are going to give away some prizes. So I drew some names for some different objects and we'll get these in the mail to you um, over the next couple days. We'll start off with this coffee mug and we have Ted for the winner of this. Oh, yep, you're still on here. Way to go, Ted. And we have this cup and Allie, this is for you. <laughs> It's so tricky talking back and not really getting feedback when everyone's muted. <laughs> um, we have this coaster set with a little stand, and that is for Samantha. Hey. You need some noise? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have these really cool sunglasses, and Kenny, these are for you. Oh, yay, Kenny. <laughs> Um, we have a license plate frame, and payments, hey, hey we have that for you, still on here too, yep. We have a koozie, and Matt Johnson. We have this really cool, uh, maybe I should say neat cooler bag, um, so that way next time we do have a tailgate, you can bring it, bring it for that. And Chris Spencer, you have that. And last but not least, we have a t-shirt and Glenn Davey, we drew your name for that one. So we'll get all of those um, packaged up and together <laughs> and in the mail to you um, over the next couple of days, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, does anyone have any last minute questions? Okay, let's give Jim another round of applause. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thanks for showing Thank up. I greatly appreciated. You know, we can't do this without y'all's support. Uh, you guys have been, most of you have been long time supporters, do whatever we ask you to do. And then the other part for me is just making contacts with people I haven't seen for a while. So I appreciate every buzzing in to spend a little bit of time with, with somebody like me and you could be <laughs> going to see Biden and Trump. So. <laughs> Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We really, really appreciate it. We hope, um, you know, maybe in the spring or in the summer, we'll be able to see a lot of you in, in person and we, we can travel to come see you. So thanks again. If you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to myself or Jim or John or Katie. We're always here to help you and answer questions. Um, we appreciate your continued support. Everyone stay healthy. Yeah, thanks for putting this on. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Good to see you, Jim. Yep.